Financial Argument. Follow us on YouTube. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with FinanceandLiberty.com, and back with us today is Bill Murphy from the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. Bill, thank you so much for joining us again today. Uh, good to be here again, EJ. Thanks for calling. All right. Well, I'd first like to discuss a little bit about the precious metal markets. Now, the last time we had you on, you were talking about how it looked like gold and silver were going to skyrocket higher. Silver looked like it was going to break out through the $18.50 uh, level. Since then, it hasn't done that. It's gone a little bit down, but then it's coming back up. Do you see silver beginning to maybe break through 1850? And if that happens, what do you see happening with uh, the silver market? Well, there's a lot there to get into. Uh, yeah, tank last time, the gold cartel, J.P. Morgan and Forces, you know, t took it from uh, 18 back to 1580, 50% correction of its move up. And then now it's, it's been going straight back up, and we're challenging 1750, some short-term resistance this morning. Uh, it's the most whacked out market I've ever seen trade in all my life in 40 years. Nothing ever close to it. It's, it is so bizarre the way it's trading, what they're doing. The open interest is going up, up again, uh, not far from its all time highs with JP Morgan again and the gold cartel trying to stop it. And I think they're getting desperate. I mean, a lot of us in our camp would like to think that way, but we can't understand how it's, they've kept it down here so long and the strange market action. I call it, you know, you know, wacky is 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 I think beginning to show that something is very wrong behind the scenes, and I do believe, and I've said this before, and as, if you look at a chart, you can see why. If, if, if you, a long-term chart, if it takes out 1850, this after what we've seen them do the past few months, it will suggest they're losing control, and when they lose control, you could see silver go up so fast, so quickly, uh, people won't believe it, and I believe that that this time. When silver moves and breaks out, that it'll go up much faster than 50 than it did in April of 2011, and we'll take that out and go to 100. And about we've been, a lot of us in our camp have been looking for that for a while, and because what the quote they have done, it hasn't occurred. But I just think we're getting closer and closer, and it's going to be stunning. Now, what about in the gold market? What do you see happening there? Well, the same thing. I mean, the the, the, the it's it's just ridiculous. And by the way, unless we get a commercial signal failure. We, which means that the bad guys, the gold cartel, gets blown out. Gold and silver will never, ever go up again. Uh, it's the open interest in, in gold went up to 608000 from 380000 It crashed below 500000 Now, as the gold price has been going straight up for the past two weeks, it's the open interest, meaning the bad guys are trying to stop it, stop it, stop it again. So at some point, the physical market and the rest of the world has to overpower the ability of the central banks and the bullion banks are allied with them to, to, to prevent that from happening. They just can't stop it anymore. And that's what we'll call a commercial signal failure, in which means that the other so-called commercials or shorts will be forced to cover, not necessarily the gold cartel, but the others that are weaker hands trading with them will have to cover because they can't take the financial pain anymore. And that's what has to occur for gold and silver to break uh, $18 and, and uh, $1,300. Are you saying that if silver breaks, you know, the eighteen dollar, eighteen fifty mark, and gold breaks the thirteen hundred dollar mark, then we could see basically just the end of the manipulation? Well, I'm not saying we'll see the end of it. They'll be forced to retreat big time. They'll, they, we've seen it for so many years, decades. I wouldn't say that, but they will be forced to regroup at much higher levels because the prices that they pushed gold and silver to these last four or five years are, I mean are down to artificially low levels, which can't be maintained, meaning they, they're, they're running out of enough physical supply to meet growing current demand. So they'll have to fall back, regroup at much higher price levels. The question is, will they lose total control of silver, which uh, in many of our camp believe, I mean, that, that what they've done is just extraordinary, and it's, it's so egregious that the price is liable to blow up and, and, and go up faster than most anybody can believe. Now, moving now to viewers' questions, you know, last time we uh, talked about the Deutsche Bank lawsuit and how they were accused of gold manipulation, and Alpha Lenny is wanting to know, what legal charges against the manipulators are currently in process or completed? Once these charges are heard, will it force the manipulators to stop, or is it unstoppable? Well, you know, this is about the European situation and not specifically what's going on in the most egregious area in the COMEX and what the United States' government is doing. So it can't touch them. 
uh, legally, the exchange stabilization fund has a right to rig the gold price. It's legal from from their standpoint. It's not for the collusion with the banks uh, to fix because. But this is where it gets so complicated. The United States would rather release its nuclear secrets than what it's doing in the gold market. That's a, what my colleague Chris Powell has said for forever now, and he's correct. And but when it comes to the specific Deutsche Bank thing, I'm working with some attorneys on it to try to be of help. And the key here will be wrongdoing. If they ever admit wrongdoing, which these lawyers don't think we're supposed to know in another week or two, uh, would ever occur, would open up the floodgates to all kinds of lawsuits. So the question is, what are they actually admitting to? We know that they've turned on their their uh, some of the other bullion banks and they admitted doing certain things. The, the legalese terminology of it all is very critical, and we'll know that in a couple of weeks. Again, meaning a wrongdoing, which is it's almost never done in cases like this. So, yes, it's a big deal because obviously God knows what these people have been doing, but for 17 years now. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. The real problem for the gold and silver markets is what these bullion banks, certain certain one of them, certain trading operations, and the BIS and so on is doing in their conjunction with the United States government. And that's what we're trying to get exposed so that we can stop it. But, of course, it's a very difficult thing to do, especially when the press won't even mention your name. Definitely. And, I mean, did you want to just kind of expand on that, exactly what the bullion banks are doing with the U.S. government? Well, this is what they've been doing for years, you know, coordinating the suppression of the, of the, of the prices. I mean, simplistically, what they just did when the price was ran up to thirteen hundred dollars and was crushed in May, they sold and sold and sold collusively, which is illegal uh, uh, in, in terms of individual acts by the bullion banks. And then they just collectively attacked, and the price went down to twelve hundred. Now they're going up; they're st- trying to stop it again. But eventually, they'll run out of physical supplies. I mentioned to stop this process, in which they'll be forced to retreat. And that's what we hope is going on now, but the proof will be in the pudding and what the price action does. But, I mean, we've, the, the, reasons are, the reasons for them doing so are legion. Uh, just simplistically, again, wait, gold goes up. What? It's bad for incumbent politicians. It's bad for the bullion banks. None of them make any money on it. It's a, it's a barometer of U.S. financial market help. It says something's wrong. And certainly, every, all of your people know about the incredible... Oh, yeah, monetary uh, QE and, and the global and the deficits in the United States and globally. I mean, it's it's leading to something that's extraordinary on the upside. But they've been able to contain it, and that's what they will do forever until they're blown up. And I'm hoping that that tipping point is close at hand. We'll see, and the price action will tell us. This next viewer's question is, is it true that the United States government is 100% involved in backing the manipulation of precious metals? And if so, is silver their number one target? Well, the answer is yes, as you probably would guess. It's 100%. They're behind the whole deal. I mean, I'll never forget one little tidbit when uh, Al McDonough, the New York Fed, and Greenspan, I think in 1993 or 1994 under Robert Rubin, went over to the BIS and joined the BIS Bank of International Settlements, even though it was against U.S. policy. So they're against it, and really it's all about gold. I mean, who cares about silver in the monetary world in the sense of what it signifies? I mean, a $200 silver price, I mean, who outside of our 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 sector and people that follow this, who would really care? What statement is that making? Gold's a different matter. But they realize because silver is a monetary metal and it's allied with gold, that way back when that they would have to control silver along with gold so the suppression of the gold price wouldn't stand out. If silver was a hundred bucks right now and gold was where it is, people would go, what, what, you know, would make it too obvious. So then it began to feed on itself, gold and silver being rigged at the same time. So, uh, gold is their target. However, we believe, and we've got a great guy in our camp named James McShirley who does this incredible stuff and knows the futures markets better than anybody. He believes that silver is their kryptonite, meaning that because the silver physical supply is so low right now relative to what they have to do that they can lose control of it and it can start to go berserk and then affect gold. So that's what I'm looking for and I think is coming. And, you know, we'll see. Again, the proof's in the pudding. If it takes out 1850, it ought to go bananas. All right. Well, this next viewer is wanting to know, when the manipulation stops, what do you see as the price targets for gold and silver? And also, why would gold and silver ever stop rising under a scenario 
for example, of like a dollar collapse and a complete devaluation of the dollar, wouldn't gold and silver just continue rising um, indefinitely? Well, it's 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 a it's a good point, but you know they could do they, they could do anything on the upside. You've got a Jim Rickards who spoke at our conference in London in 2011 out there, you know, promoting his book and talking about ten thousand dollar gold. I mean, why couldn't it happen? Of course. Uh, because of the predicament of what they have done here, what they've created by all the suppression and manipulation of the price. So I think it is going to get out of control and, and it can keep going. But to what level, I don't know. At some point, people in India that have bought it down here when no one else did, you know, they'll sell, thank you very much, take their profits. I mean, some Chinese people, they're big traders, do the same. So what Gatto wants is to get it back to be a free market. I mean, right now, gold... And, According to a lot of people I respect, it's less than half of what it would be had it kept up with inflation. And that gets into a whole story of what, what's happened. But I would just think my, I guess my main thing to bring to the table here is that with silver, in my opinion, if silver can take out 1850, it will signify a loss of control of the silver market. And it's going to explode. Uh, I'm a big Eric Spot fan, and uh, he's been talking about $100 silver for some time, and I think he's going to be right. And there's many people that think it can go a lot higher, and there's no reason that it can't. Now, you were talking about how, you know, the U.S. government is involved with this, so it's not like anyone can take legal action against the government, you know? I mean, that would be very unlikely. I guess, did you want to discuss a little bit about that, how basically it seems like the manipulators are above the law? Pretty much so. I mean, you know, I've been at this forever, as you know, and... You know, we, I've been to Washington a number of times and spoken to the Speaker of the House and went and made trips to all the different offices and handed out stuff. And we sued the Fed and got a $3,000 check. And I met with Ron Paul down there. And, uh, we've gone, that's what GABA has done to try to get this exposed because it's wrong and it's eventually going to hurt the American people in a big way because it's making markets dysfunctional. It's disguising what's really going on, which eventually will blow up. So, you know, we've made our efforts, and it's it's pretty much uh, hopeless. I mean, they they just they won't do anything. I mean, look look at silver. They they investigated silver for five years. In the meantime, they find all these different bullion banks that we're complaining about have been fined. Morgan alone to find over twenty five thirty billion dollars for wrongdoing, for rigging and conspiring in markets, energy, LIBOR, you know, currency, mortgages. I mean, you name it, and they're get silver after five years they found nothing wrong it's the only market that they found nothing wrong you have to be kidding me I mean, it's just it's just ludicrous and the cftc is part of our government and so whatever they did find out they were told to shut up i was i've been down there much a bunch of times the only commissioner who ever gave us the time of day bart shilton and they got to him and quieted him down but he was a great guy and he really cared and he looked into it and Vetsy was told if he ever wanted a job in Washington again, he's got a kid, family, you know, he piped down. So he did. I don't blame him. I mean, it's just he tried, and he found out what he was up against. Now, this last viewer question is, do you see the election, you know, do you see either Trump or Hillary Clinton doing anything about the manipulation? Whoever wins and gets in office, do you see them doing anything about the manipulation? Nobody ever does. Um it's just the way it is. I mean, it's, it's Bill Clinton said I didn't realize. He said I didn't realize I wouldn't running be running the show when I became president, and that's a quote from him. And, and they, that's what happens. The big money and power behind the scenes rule, and so it really doesn't matter because this is the U.S. government itself, and they'll go back to legalese things that they have put in motion or in writing and so on. So well, nothing can be done about it. What will blow it up is the physical market overpowering their ability, the bad guys, the gold cartel's ability to keep the price down at artificially low levels. And I'm hoping that's getting closer and closer at hand and then will evolve over a period of time. And it's why we should get much, much higher prices. But in the, in terms of, you know, having spent nearly two decades trying to work and work on this and, and made the effort and done all kinds of things, including a big you know, conference we had in 2008 in Washington, I don't, I don't, I, I just, it just won't happen. I mean, it's just, it's, uh, it doesn't mean that you give up in any way. We were, we, you know, Chris Powell, my colleague, does a great job at exposing different facts here and there. And I do what I can, and it's, we, you know, we're going to pound away at it, but there's no sense beating our head against the wall doing the same things, which just don't work or go anywhere. 
It's been too many. You know, we, we, we've hit our head against the wall, they like said, too many times. But it's going to blow up, and it's going to be very exciting for our camp when it does because uh, eventually it's going to expose what they've done. And I do think, it, don't get me wrong, it's going to become a big deal down the road because people are going to start to say, how could this have happened? And God will have the answers for them. Well, Bill Murphy, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers where they can find you and any last thoughts you'd like to add? Well, as I mentioned, Chris Powell, my colleague, does a great job at www.gata.org. You can get up and sign up for his list. And then uh, I have a website, lemetropolecafe.com, where you can sign up for a two-week free trial and see if what I have to say on a daily basis is of value. All right. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Anytime, EJ. Great talk. You take care.